my okay. I'm gonna get my Twitch audio check. Come on, Twitch. There was a network error. Please try again. I don't believe you. <clears throat> There we go. And audio check. Cool. I think we're good. Okay. Oh, uh, I lost the number. 252, I think. Okay. <sighs> you ready? Okay. Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 252 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Hayam, and Tom is that to me. He's that way. My screen's that, video uh, mirrored. All that right. way. So we are that way. Yeah. Uh, so way. if you're watching us live on, so we're one way, and then Tom sets uh, OBS a different way. So we're 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 somewhere, but we're there. Yep. So, and we both have our amazing green screens behind us, so we can always change the background, everything like that. So uh, so the good news is there's not that much news. I mean, I, I don't know. Do we really care about the, the big story that happened about an hour ago was the FBI is like, there's election meddling. But that was it. It's like election meddling. Bad. Yeah, but I mean, weren't they calling this? We knew that. For, yeah, like months and months and months hey it's probably going to be election meddling guess what there's election meddling yeah. i mean i mean there's a whole village at defcon look it's if you think mail and again not to be political if you think mail and balloting has problems i think a, give give me 20 minutes with an election machine and then we'll see some real problems <laughs> and and we've shown that Okay, so we've shown that and everything else. And and there's, again, join the WhatsApp group if you want to to hear about how you can do all these election uh, election hacks. And yes, they do exist. So, so I mean, the, the Postal Service, I think, was the number one most trusted federal agency forever. That and the CDC. And now we can't stand both of them. But anyway... No politics. So, yes, there is election meddling. There's a lot of disinformation. Okay? And then the other thing we're not going to talk about is how you leave a laptop outside somebody's door and never follow up with it when the guy is blind and something else like that. If you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. So, But what we are going to talk about um, is signal groups. We've, yes. we've got, a, got a cheery topic for you. Um, so we've been, uh, actually you've, you've done most of this testing. You take it away. Well, I'll do the test. So, the, so the, the biggest complaint we get, so first off, we have a WhatsApp group message us. We will throw you in there. And we've spoken a lot about exactly this. So we wanted a group that we can talk in and we, since we are a security focused minded podcast, obviously we wanted security. I mean, it's not that we all have, and and look, if, if it was my way, I probably would have recommend, I would have probably said Facebook Messenger because I really, really like Facebook Messenger, but it's Facebook and not everyone worldwide has Facebook. Facebook is, we, we, we talk about them all the time being shady. So he said, you know what, we need something else. And WhatsApp at the at that time had, uh, they were using the open whisper system, which is Signal's backend. So they're encrypted. They have all the features that we wanted. So we started with them. People said, why not Signal? Well, the problem with Signal is you at that point, this is a few years ago, you had to add the person to a, as your contact. Then you had to initiate a conversation with them. Then you can throw them in. So when we don't care who's in the WhatsApp group. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of phone numbers of people. And in Signal, you just saw the phone number. So it's really, really hard to deal with just the phone number. Like I, I, I need more pers personality than that. I want a name. It could be a screen name. I didn't care. But at least I didn't know who I was talking to. So uh, so Signal didn't get rid of that. However, in the most latest update, oh, and before we the most latest update, they started groups, but everyone was admin. 
So two years ago, they didn't have any of this. A year ago, they changed it in a way where uh, you can put a profile name. So, I mean, you can be anything you want. I just didn't want a phone number. So we would throw people into a group. The problem was everyone was an admin. So if you accidentally got in there, you can wreak havoc on the group. Now, I trust our group. It, I, we can make everyone admin in our group currently. But remember, we had a few years ago where we had some uh, Bitcoin people jump in and, and spam us. So so, um, so we wanted, we, we need some admin control. The other thing that we were focused on on a messaging platform is we all have day jobs. So can we be at our office and be on the desktop and share links and everything else? So we decided that, that WhatsApp met all of those requirements. They were free. They had some sort of end-to-end -end encryption, which is Signal at that point. And it did the desktop. It did links. It did the, the and it did all it did all the stickers. It did everything. So we really like it. The problem is Facebook is now getting their hands on it. And again, we're a security group, so we said, you know what? Let's try Signal again. So far, it's okay. It's not a hundred percent. My biggest gripe is that when I get a notification, I Signal hides the notification. It says you have a notification. You have to unlock your phone. You have to go in there and uh and then you can see it so if it's somebody important i want to know about i i want it hidden that's fine but if it's the group chat that we chat in all day i can wait i can wait a few hours until i'm sitting there waiting to respond so it's not a hundred percent but we are testing it out yeah and I'm, I'm pretty sure that those notifications um yeah so notifications uh you can actually change this in the options to either show nothing, which is how I used to have it set, name only, so it's like, hey, Tom sent a message, or name content and actions, which means like, um, you know that that feature where you can like drag down a notification and then type right there in the, the tiny little notification bar and hit send, and that's it, like you replied, it's great, you don't have to open the full app. Um, you can do that from Signal, so uh, options oh. menu. Well, uh, I'm getting my I'm getting my iPhone 12 when you hear this. So when you hear this, I will probably have done it. But currently, I was looking for it in the Android system. My biggest problem is is that we we assume Signal to be this bulletproof encryption thing, which it is. But if I want it, I don't want I want to change it like per message, like the WhatsApp the the yeah. in 30 group. We're not discussing state secrets in there. We don't know who's in there. There could be there <laughs> it's could literally be three letter group. There could be three letter agents in there. We don't, we have no idea. So, I mean, if so, we want it secure for the obvious reason that we run a security podcast. Uh, the other thing is the desktop app is just, it is there, but not there it's garbage. yet. It is garbage. So, I'm going to say it. So, so it's one of those we want, we really, really want to move and we're, we're testing it out. We're seeing how it is, but I don't want to install a desktop app. I want. I really, really like how WhatsApp did it, and I understand the trade-offs. But we're not. We're not talking state secrets in there because we don't know who's in there. We just want it to be secure, and so so we're still we're still trying it. So if you want an invite to the WhatsApp group or you want an invite to the Signal group, we will give you both. And we don't we don't really care. And then the other thing with Signal is that you have to give people your super secret number. If you're on, uh, if you have a Google Voice number like I do that I use for everything, Signal is used with my actual cell phone number. So, but the good news is people don't call me anymore, so I don't really have to worry about that. So I got Signal working with my Google Voice number. It wasn't easy, but I was able to do it. I, I like it, the idea of separating the phone numbers. Yeah, I, I like the idea of separating the numbers. Um, because if you're talking to me on Signal, I want you to have my real cell phone number, yeah, it, which which is sure. fine. It, so, and like I said, um, and like I said, I I don't really care. I mean, I I still get uh, I still get car spam and uh, healthcare spam and everything else, but it's getting less and less now with the new features. Um, so we, we haven't done this before, but uh, I have an important message from our advertisers. We've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty program. It's yes. awful. Oh, just just stop them. Please, somebody, somebody shut them down. I get literally four of those calls every single day. Every day. And, and the problem is, so I do have, so I have a landline. I'm one of those weird people who have landlines. 
that all it is is spam calls. <clears throat> so if it rings twice, I tend to pick it up because if it rings twice, so I have the other one I have is Nomo Robo hooked up to that phone number. And Nomo Robo is uh, the Dar. It's actually a DARPA invention. They paid money out of DARPA to to try and stop the robocalls. And so it rings once, and if it doesn't ring again, it's a spam call. But they're coming through. More and more are coming through because what they're doing is they're spoofing the numbers. So, and with all the COVID announcements from the town and everything else, that's why I still have a landline, and I sometimes do have to pick it up. So, but but again, it's we have the WhatsApp group. I really like WhatsApp. I mean, I know Facebook owns it and it's 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 on it. I don't want to say it's not going to die anytime soon. I actually do like Facebook Messenger, but it's it's there. It works. It, it's rock solid. So I'm really a big WhatsApp fan. And ask me in two weeks when I have iMessage and I'm a blue bubble again. I may change my <laughs> mind, but... I um, So I haven't even turned on iMessage. Like, I don't, I don't text because... I don't use my real phone number, so. Um, but I, with with Signal and WhatsApp, it's super easy to see the distinction just flat on on the UI um, between their priorities, right? Signal is going to have privacy above all else, uh, and like not perfect privacy. There's no such thing. Like they have made trade offs, right? Using phone numbers is a trade off, um, but like super. Secure privacy is Signal's number one concern, and WhatsApp's number one concern is user experience. And you can see how that shook out, right? Like WhatsApp was not end to end encrypted; it just wasn't uh, until uh, um, the the founders got in touch with Moxie Marlin Spike and said, "Hey, uh, can we can we add this thing? Can we give you some money and you make us end to end encrypted?" Um, which is great, uh, but it. it does mean that signal does feel janky in some respects especially around the desktop apps i don't want to scare people away from signal it is always improving but i've actually noticed on the desktop apps sometimes messages don't just don't come through like i i even looked at a conversation uh between me and one of my friends where on signal on my phone full conversation and on the desktop app one of those messages was just missing never found out what happened to it um, so I, I, I really wish they would fix that. I really do. Now that I, now that WhatsApp had the little barcode scanny thing that you scan and it just pops up again, that's a security trade off, but I really like that because I can it's go so anywhere convenient. I want. It's like you so don't have to convenient. install anything. Signal yeah. actually, you have to do both. You have to download something and it's a, it's, it's an electron app. So it's like a Chrome extension. Mm. It's, it's essentially a Chrome extension. Uh, and then you have to do the linking, so it it does it. And I get why it does it, but that means that if you're not at your computer or wherever it is, you you you're stuck with it. Now, I what I will say is, so I also have an iPad. Typing on the iPad is a pain because the keyboard is so much bigger. Having the one finger, having the thumb on the phone, makes it a lot easier. So I can see that. Anyway, so we're doing both. Signal is constantly improving but there are those little things like phone numbers and and the desktop apps and and again like we said it's just this idea that that we kind of want to be secure but it doesn't really matter what's in there so so we're playing with it maybe we'll just keep both up and running because it doesn't really affect me either way yeah it doesn't cost us anything to have two yeah. chat rooms open so it's um, uh it's <sighs> That, yeah, that's that, that's 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 messaging that's signal uh again you're welcome to come in there if you haven't tried signal i do like signal i mean mm -hmm. the disappearing messages all that it is it there is a little bit of a learning curve because it is super secure i mean it's not like you have to do a whole bunch of stuff but but if you're talking to someone be aware like why does this happen it's probably for security reasons and they're saying signal desktop is going to get voice call uh video and uh voice calls soon which is a good thing so i'm hoping for that so again if you want to join let us know but those are really good trade-offs that we we really do like whatsapp we think whatsapp is a good product but they will eventually work with facebook and they will merge and the metadata will go obviously is going to facebook now but if you 
it's only going to get worse. So the messages are still encrypted. Facebook cannot get the messages inside, but I guess they deem that what's inside is not really of value. It's more of how many times you connect to the server, who you're talking to, uh, the Facebook profiles of that. And, and that's the bigger thing where signal keeps none of them and you have to manage all of it. And sometimes it could be a little difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, so go ahead. The uh, the other topic we had tonight uh, is concerning the, I guess, now kind of older news of the uh, Apple Mac T2 chip hack. Um, and uh, there's, there's a couple of reasons why we haven't brought it up until now. A, there's not really a whole lot we can tell you to do or change. Like uh, when it comes to security news, unless it's something like big and breaking or something that you have to do something we don't really want to burden you with that. Like, oh, hey, this thing's on fire. Cool. Why do I care that this PHP application got an update and has a really bad CVE? Like, that doesn't affect me. So we only want to give you actionable security items. But this kind of, like, it's been sitting there for a little bit, and it finally crossed the territory into maybe people don't know about the evil maid attack. Um, So this t2 chip it's a general purpose security like secure enclave chip that's been in iphones for a very long time uh and is now making its way into the mac product line um or it has been making its way into the mac product line um there's a hack so just like all your brilliant uh iphone jailbreaks you can now jailbreak the t2 chip on your mac um unfortunately this only does uh bad things for security. Um, so what a secure enclave is, is it's basically a, a special like tiny processor that is specifically designed for security purposes. It's separate from the main processor. It's separate from the main memory. It's its own little thing where it can do secure calculations, uh, one way hashing functions, um, and other cool security stuff that they don't necessarily want to have accessible to the rest of the computer. Like if you were building encryption keys, right? Like public and private keys, and you wanted to really, really keep it private. Um, I wish I had it here. I don't, but if you want to keep something super private, lock it into the hardware. So we're all familiar with the keys, those little dongles. Yeah, I'm we, holding we mine up. Chains. I'm holding there mine up because I have one with me. So the YubiKey will output all kinds of public keys, public keys for days, but the private key is locked inside of that device. It's really, really hard to get to. You've got to do some incredible feats of engineering to try to extract a private key from a YubiKey or secure enclave or any other type of hardware token. Uh, That's why they're nice for security. The bad thing about those though, is let's say your YubiKey has a defect, a hardware defect. Which actually they did have which they did. So what did you have to do? Well, they had to recall all of them, build new ones with that defect fixed and ship them out to customers. Uh, It's not really a cheap problem to solve and it's not easy for you either because unless you know about it, you've got a bum YubiKey or at least one with a flaw. Um, The T2 chip is basically the same way. Um, It has a flaw. Apple can't fix it without literally touching the hardware on every single Mac and iPhone they've ever put out. So... Well, we don't know if it's on the iPhone yet. Do we know that it's on the iPhone? Yeah, because the iPhone T2 has been broken for a little bit, Um, which mostly just enables jailbreaking. Um, So the T2 chip on the Mac, people were afraid because they said, oh, wait, is my full disk encryption key going to be here? And no, it's not there. It's not stored there. Um, But basically what the T2 chip does for the Mac operating system is it does like system integrity protection where it it'll run through a check of hashes and say okay or apparently my watch couldn't hear what i said yeah that's that's fantastic um but apparently uh what what it does is uh uh, system integrity level protection so it looks at hashes of certain operating system files make sure everything is uh nice and clean and exactly the version it's supposed to be um they do other things with like bootloading and secure boot to make sure you're only booting an approved apple operating system and that's less for apple being afraid of you running linux and more because they don't want somebody like injecting something nasty into a build of OS 10 
loading it on your Mac and then you using a compromised operating system. So there is like legitimate applications to this device. Um, it's broken. That chip has been broken wide open. Um, the good news is that it is not a stateful hack. It is a stateless hack, which means that when the system completely reboots, when that chip itself reboots, because the chip it's, itself is a tiny computer, uh, it wipes away everything, like all the hacks that were in RAM. Um, the bad news is that if your Mac is asleep, and a lot of people don't shut down their Macs, they just shut them. So the Mac's asleep. You can hack the T2 chip. You can say, you know, load some malware on it and say, okay, capture all the keystrokes and push them here or enable this thing or uh, replace this binary with this other one. Um, and it would allow you to do things like run malware on the operating system from the T2 chip. Um, it's not easy. It's not simple. And it does require physical access. So somebody has to have your device. They have to hack it and it has to be running at the time. Um, now, can they break your full disk encryption, your file vault encryption by hacking T2? No. Can they use the T2 to steal your password so they don't have to break your encryption? Yes. Yeah, I was going to um, say, I was yeah. say exactly that. Are they, they're, they're not, they can't break the encryption, but they can take the password because the password's exactly. stored in the T2 chip. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Well, the password's not stored in the T2 chip. Um, I, like that, that password isn't stored at all in the T2 chip, but they can instruct the T2 chip to watch the keystrokes mm -hmm. to get the password, and then you can just use it. Um, yeah, I would just assume that in the T2 chip, because it's the secure area, that they would keep uh, your private. You would they would keep your private key for the, in, in the, the for the full disk encryption. Uh, so how it works, at least at least to my knowledge, and I could be wrong here, is that your password is just used as a one-way function to build basically a password-based key derivation function. So you take a password, you turn it into an AES key that's used to encrypt another key, which is your file vault encryption key, and uh, that's used to encrypt the disk. I don't believe that's stored. The original thing that's used as the input to one of those functions could be stored, but I don't believe that the password key itself is. It's just a component of the encryption. Um, there's there's a lot of interaction with encryption components, and it's it's hard to explain that in a nice user friendly way. The, the other so the T two chip also contains your fingerprint, right? Because that's yes. that's it's where the fingerprint is. So they store the hash of your fingerprint. Yep which is not your fingerprint, just the hash, which is okay. Yeah. Um, but you said it, but it they requires can then physical access. That to, they can then use the hash of the fingerprint to you know, unlock or inform other components yeah. of the system. Um, it's, it's not a great problem to have, and Apple is certainly looking at this. Um, from everything I've read, they haven't said anything publicly about this, um, but I'm sure they're working on it. Apple does take security very seriously. Um, so it, what should you do? You've got a Mac, you've got a T2 chip. If you've got a Mac with a touch bar, chances are, yeah, you've got a T2 chip. Um, what should you do? Well, if you want to be super secure, don't sleep your Mac, shut it down. More importantly, don't leave it out somewhere. Um, the evil maid attack is basically where somebody, presumably an evil maid, a state sponsored actor acting as like a, you know, hotel maid person walks in, finds your laptop, unscrews the whole thing, adds in like hardware level key loggers and radios and all this stuff, to, like jams an entire military base into your laptop chassis, closes it back up and then leaves your hotel room. Then later that night, when you're sitting there playing Fortnite on your laptop, guess what? They got your Epic Games password, they bought V-Bucks and they transferred all the skins. It's nothing you can do. Um, so that's the evil main attack. This T2 hack means that it's yet another thing that somebody in that position who's trying to physically compromise your machine, they've got another tool in their toolkit. Um, there's not a ton that you can do to really protect yourself other than uh, don't leave your laptop laying around. Um, but I, I know it's been making the news circles recently, so we figured, hey, why not cover it here? I mean, it is something. The good news is... It's on the it's on the Mac laptops. It's not on the phone. 
Uh, I'm sure the I, I don't know how the iPhone 12 is going to be, but because I mean the current new phone hopefully had enough time for them to fix it, but because like the current phones, not the 12s, are immune to the the check rain attack, the checkmate attack. Um, I haven't looked I at think the jailbreaks in a while. Again, yeah, and I I don't know. See, here's the problem with jailbreaking. Uh, if you're in the jailbreaking community, you want to be able to do stuff to your phone. The problem is it requires you to find a security exploit. And we've I think we've spoken about this before. It's, yes, you want to root your Android phone or jailbreak your iPhone. What you're doing is you're introducing a security risk into your phone in order to do this. And and I, I used to do it. And I said, you know what? This is not worth it anymore. I'm not getting any real special functionality. So for the people who are jailbreaking, they're, I think they're doing it just to say they can. I don't know what other specific reasons there are to jailbreak or root anymore other than to say that you had it. Yeah, my my main reason uh, was for ad block. That's, that's yeah. literally it. Was on, on Android, I would root my phone and put in a, a root level DNS ad blocker, which worked really well for most applications. Like um, on something like the official YouTube app where I would get an ad before videos, I wouldn't anymore, which is really nice. It's great to be without ads. Um, but like you said, it just wasn't worth it. And it got to be a pain because back in the day I was playing Pokemon Go and uh, I was using a custom ROM and then all of a sudden it just stopped working. Unfortunately, due to bad actors doing bad things on, on that platform with that game, uh, they really locked down what OSs could run it and custom ROMs were in the crosshairs. Um, so there's there's nice things you can do with rooting, but at least for me, just like you, my use cases, they don't really line up anymore. It's way easier for me not to do it than it is for me to do it. I mean, not having the Bluetooth work here and there, uh random bootings weird issues i mean i did that when i was younger then i had i got married and had kids and i don't have time for that i need stuff to work 100 yeah. percent of the time and i don't want to sit there and fumble with it it's i still also get nervous when i re, when i install updates on my phone because i don't want it to break because the last thing i need to do is on my way to work or at work deal with it so so yeah. i am no longer in the rooting camp uh, but again, Android and, and iOS have gotten so far ahead. They're basically, they have the same features at this point. It's, it's what features do you want and how you want them to look. And on the Android side, you can probably do anything you want. I care about the secure, you know what it is? My phone's getting its last update in December. My phone is fully capable to go a whole nother year, but the last thing that the pixel two XL is getting is, um, a December update. And it's like, now what do I do with this phone? I mean, and this goes back to the last week where we said, what really could they do? I don't know, but I want to have those security updates because I do a lot on my phone. And so now I'm obviously moving to Apple, which has said five years approximately is about the lifespan of a phone. And they're keeping, yeah. and they're keeping their word on it. It's not like once they did it, it's they're, they're keeping their word. The iPhone success is getting iOS 14. Yeah. Like that, that phone is ancient. It is getting the latest and greatest updates. Um, and my argument for wanting to keep an Android phone uh, for for longer than its intended lifespan and, and really just continue with the Android ecosystem was always, well, yeah, Google might not support it, but I can just install a Cyanogen mod or, or Lineage OS or any of these other mods on my phone and just keep it running myself. And yeah, while that's true for the OS level updates, it doesn't actually include drivers because those are still binary blobs. So a lot of these security updates are related to your radios, right? Your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your, your LTE radios. And a custom ROM, most of the time, like I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, rely on a completely different firmware package than the OS package. So even though you're still getting OS updates, all your radio firmware and all your baseband firmware and all that stuff, it's still going to be stuck on the old, decrepit, possibly insecure versions. Uh, and that's that's a trade-off you're going to have to decide for yourself. So I, like I said, I am not, I, I can afford to, and so I did. And I'm having some weird issues where I would open up an app and it would just, it would just, I would unlock the phone by fingerprint and it would just stall. Like it would eventually go, but it would just stall for a second. You're like, what's going on? 
So, I mean, could I deal with it? Absolutely, I could deal with it. This is not a problem. But you know what? It's it's you buy Apple. The new iPhone comes out. You buy Apple products and they're released. It's time to release. Let's go with it. Hopefully, I'll keep it five years. You're you're going on year three of your phone. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. And so far, and no problems. I so I looked at the the iphone event i watched it i was like yeah you know it's been two years should i buy another phone i'm looking at this thing i'm like it the new iphone looks nice but frankly i don't need it um i i got i got the xs and uh it it runs as well as it did the day i bought it so why do i care the thing is literally 150 bucks from being paid off from the the cell phone company uh, or provider. So I have, you don't need 5g no... when you have Wi-Fi. you don't need 5g yeah, exactly. when you're in your house and you're not going to get five. You may get 5g outside and yeah. you have face ID. You have face ID. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's why would I move? Whole... Yeah. It's, it's so. a really weird feeling. So I, this is my first iPhone. I've been on Android forever. And at, at the one year mark, I was like, uh, okay, I can start to feel this phone getting a little a little shaky. Year two, I'm like, yeah, okay, it's time for an update. It's definitely time for an update. And it's not like I was buying cheap phones, but this iPhone has been consistent. It's really weird to me. And again, I'm going to sound like an Apple fanboy. If you're watching the video, I've got my my stupid Apple earbuds in. Like, I'm, I'm converted. I'll admit it. I'm completely converted. I'm not going to buy a Mac anytime soon. I hate my Mac. I use one for work and it is awful. But my iPhone, yeah, I swear by the thing. And I'll say that my Apple Watch is coming tomorrow with my iPad Pro. Look, we could do a whole separate show on how I made my iPad Pro my laptop, but but the other people are people on YouTube are doing a better job of it. But that's what I've done. And again, I need a new phone. We went there. Anyway, uh, let's we're rambling on, so let's wrap up. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah. keep your Mac on you and uh don't just leave it out somewhere where somebody could install nasty hacks on your t2 chip and if you can update if you can restart your mac every once in a while they restart pretty quick just do it yep i mean i'm not saying i mean people like their server uptime but i mean you don't and, have the guinness and- book of world records at this point so just do it get get that muscle memory for typing in that boot password you gotta do it so anyway, we will talk to everyone hopefully next week with some more, or hopefully more news or not hopefully more, more news, but news that we can talk about anyway. So we will see everyone next week. Bye everyone. See everyone. Got 15 minutes out of WhatsApp. That was really good. <laughs>